Everyone wants to dance. The wallflowers want to dance. They're just afraid. I have no idea who, who said that. Uh, everyone wants to dance. The wallflowers want to dance. They're just afraid. I have no idea who said that everyone wants to dance. But when I read it, read it, it just busted me. My ex-wife always loved to dance and would be the first one on the dance floor, no matter the situation. When I drank, I danced all the time. Sober, I only danced when eight or more people preceded me on the dance floor. I wanted to dance. It looked like fun, but I just couldn't step out until six or seven or eight people were on the dance floor. This is an excerpt from the chapter called Fear. On, in only tens. Uh, the marketing people often lift stuff from this chapter and put it out on social media for me as advertisement for the, for the book. And I'm always impressed with what came through me and what I wrote on the page, that it actually helps me when I read this. So if you'll indulge me, I want to read a little bit of this chapter because I think as an episode, this is so useful. Fear is such a huge factor, or was a, such a huge factor in my day-to-day -day actions that it deserves its own chapter. Fear causes global chaos, war, political vitriol, divorce, and all of the nastiness in the world. Fear sucks. So if you're reading the news now, if you're on Twitter, if you're watching what's happening in, on, world, on the world stage, Brexit, uh, 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 bans on people coming into the country, it's all about fear. So this is a perfect time to be talking about such a thing. So, you know, I want to dance. I want to sing, I want to draw, I want to play softball, I want to stand on a stage, I want to write blogs, all this stuff that I'm doing now. I wrote this back uh, four years ago. But uh, to say that I don't want to do these things is really bullshit. It's hiding behind the fear. A lot of times, I don't want to dance, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. It's hiding behind the fear. Admitting that I want to do so many things is the first step. Dealing with the fear and getting past that fear is the last step, which is, means stepping out. I love Mel Robbins, 54321. 543, just do it, just do something. People always ask me how I created wealth. People actually asked me to speak when I was a sales guy and I was making lots of money. How did I create that wealth? Uh, Mark, would you share how you made so much money? How could we be like you is what they asked. And I said, that's easy. I was terrified every day. I have no self-esteem. I'm not cool. One day I realize I'm never, ever not going to be terrified. I'll probably never have self-esteem, and no matter how hard I try, I'll never be cool. So I get up every day, and I show up, and I do it anyway. That's it. When I got my first sale job as a high-tech sales guy, I woke up terrified every day. I would steal myself for the day of being so far out of my comfort zone that I couldn't see dry land. In hindsight, my 10 was an opportunity to provide for my family. The fear was a 9.9. .9. I realized that reframing my fear and changing my beliefs about it was a way through being fearful. I remember being a waiter at the Four Seasons. I remember how I felt at the beginning of every shift as the rich and famous, the world leaders, and the self-important would be sitting in my section. I was terrified every day. I would literally sweat while I was polishing my silverware. I realized that I was always terrified as a waiter, as a student, on a, day, on a date. It didn't matter the scope of the engagement. Fear was always with me. This high-end intimidating job was no different. If I was terrified as a waiter, I might as well be terrified and make a ton of money. When something is a 10, fear is not an issue. A 9.9, .9, if it's a 9.9, .9, fear wins. Fear loves to play like it's the 10. True 10, tens bump fear out of top billing. Fear will look like confusion. It'll look like resistance. Uh, for me, it was the root of all indecision, overanalyzing, uh, and, and, and behind all the choice and the rolling the boulder up the hill was fear. It will get me to say and believe things that are not even true to avoid what I really want to do. When fear is a 10, my want is a 9.9 .9 and fear will win. Conversely, when I want to do something so badly that I blow past the fear, I know it's a 10. I would fight a bear to protect my kids. There's a clue there. Terror is one thing, but when fears are small and quiet, they're insidious and can place a fog between me and what probably is a 10. There's a discernment that comes in here. 
fear of making the wrong choice, fear of what people will think, fear of losing out, and even subtly will make me not consider things that I want to do. And it'll look like I don't want to do them. And I won't slow down long enough to realize that it's fear. So as I go through the process, I saw how much fear, little fears dictated my choice and my actions. I started to get angry. I'm not going to dance because of what people sitting at the tables think of me, really? So when I slow down and I see fear for what it is, again, I'm at choice. I still give in to them daily in small and large ways. But when I see what it costs me, I now find it unacceptable that fear will keep me from using my time and attention where I want my life. So I practice leaning in. I choose where to risk and experiment. Every time I choose to go past fear and act, speak uh, or say no, that muscle gets stronger and life gets bigger. Just recently, I did uh, some karaoke. I've always been afraid of karaoke. I've never done karaoke. And just recently, I just did karaoke. And you know what happened? Within the first 30 seconds, I didn't want to give up the mic. It's funny because life is on the other side of those fears. It seems insurmountable. It seems terrible. Uh, doing a trapeze, doing a zip line, anything like that has been exhilarating when I move past the fear. You can start with small ones, but you know your fear is your compass. Your fear, leaning into those fears, getting support to move through those fears. Uh, you know, even just look, saying that you're fearful, but you want something anyway. Because often we won't even say what we want because we're so fearful of it. So. I want you to use fear as a compass. I want you to lean in. I want you to learn that. I want you to get your body used to being uncomfortable, being scared, losing your breath when you stand on stage. I still lose my breath when I walk onto a stage, but now I'm used to it. So I know what to do with it. I know how to shake my hands. I know how to get my body ready and I know what happens. And I know three seconds after I lose my breath, I'll be able to talk so I don't panic. So what, do you, what can you do today that you're scared? What conversation can you have? What can you try? What can you write? What can you, what can you do that'll just get you used to walking into that fear? Thank you for listening. I love you. Have a great rest of the day.